Hey YouTube, it's Mark and Rocky and we are This, this Cruise, Cruise Life. Life. We are today going to talk to you about the Carnival Jubilee. Now, you might remember we came to you early on before the ship was even released giving you a deck by deck overview. Well now, we've been on this ship and we're going to show you all that she has to offer. Yeah, so stick around, we're taking you deck by deck. Carnival Jubilee sailed her inaugural sailing on December 23rd, 2023, and we got some really awesome gifts as a result of that sailing. In fact, the merchandise on board Carnival Jubilee for her inaugural season is some of the best I've seen. We uh, may have uh, put some up on the shelves. We've got all sorts of fun stuff, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for the, the deck by deck. The deck by deck tour. So, so let's jump in. Deck 19. I think is a good place to start. That sounds great. The very top of the ship is known as Loft 19. That's right. If you are sailing in one of Carnival's Excel class suites, or if you just want to book access to one of these cabanas during your sailing, you have that ability. They're beautifully appointed. Yeah. yeah. Now it is a little bit expensive, uh, about 500 bucks a day, but it does give you exclusive access to Loft 19. So you're away from the crowd. Yes. You've got your own loungers. As yep. Rocky mentioned, there's cabanas up there. There's your own kind of like pool area up there. Yeah. It is a beautiful space and yeah. it is private. Yes. And you also get some cocktail service and appetizer service if you wish to add those That's on. That's awesome. And then if you jump to the back of the ship on deck 19, uh, it is Bolt Ultimate Sea Coaster the first roller coaster at sea first introduced on mardi gras then on carnival celebration yes. and now she makes her triumphant debut on carnival jubilee what a fun thrilling ride as of the time of this recording it's 15 bucks a ride here's what i will tell you it is worth to do it i realize it's 15 bucks for maybe 60 seconds but how often can you say you have ridden a roller coaster on the ocean. That's true. And the cool part about that is you actually get to go around. So it's not just one and done, which awesome. is nice. Let's jump down to 18. Let's go. Deck 18 forward has our favorite spot on a Carnival cruise ship, and that is Serenity. Uh, such a beautiful Serenity on the Excel class of ships. It's huge. It's the adults only space, and it is the largest Serenity in all of Carnival's fleet. We've never had an issue finding a space to lay down, whether it's on a lounger, right. on a day bed, one of those round things. Um, there's <laughs> a, always a ton of space. And that Serenity pool yes. is gorgeous. It's and so that, cool. that space to eat, because yeah. guess what? There's you a got restaurant. Fresh creations right there open on sea days. On the build your own salad bar. So don't miss out. That is a cruise tip. A lot of folks don't even realize that there is a build your own salad. And yeah. it puts the buffet salad bar to shame. And Big time. you've got a bar up there. Don't forget yep. about the yep. bar. Serenity bar. A couple of hot tubs up there as well. Those are oftentimes less busy than Lido deck a hot tub, so keep that in mind. Yeah. As you move a little bit further aft from Serenity, you come to some really awesome viewing space that you can watch all of the movies under the stars and anything else that they have going on down on the Lido. Uh, it's a really great place to catch some sun and just relax. I mean, you could even just lay out there. From there, you're going to, you have to make your way down to deck 17 to cross over to get back up to the aft of 18, but there's a whole bunch of stuff back there on the aft. There sure is. You've got the ropes course, which is so much fun. Yep. You have Carnival Waterworks, their little water park with all those really cool slides. Yeah. You have the mini golf course. Yeah. So much fun happening on deck 18 aft. It's the ultimate playground and truly Carnival has delivered on Jubilee. In fact, the ropes course has some new features Ooh, which are yeah. absolutely cool. There's a plank. You can walk the plank at sea and hang out over the edge of the ship. I mean, uh, truly you're going to spend, hopefully your weather is nice because you're going to spend a lot of time up here in the ultimate playground. Yeah. And it's the entrance to Bolt, we should mention that, yes. as well as the walking deck around the track. Ah, uh, yes, the jogging track. <laughs> Although I will tell you, because uh, so much stuff is up there, this is probably, I think, maybe the worst jogging track uh, in the Carnival fleet. It's because busy. there are so many people mulling about the ultimate playground. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Right. Jumping on down to deck 17, in the forward of the ship, we have the spa cabins. Kind of a unique location for spa cabins given the location of the spa, but they are beautifully located. They are in the very forward of the ship. They have balconies, interiors. It is a gorgeous space. And don't forget, if you have one of those spa cabins, you also have a private elevator that gets you direct access 
to deck five where the spa is located. Remember, we've taken that private elevator oh, yes, we many have. times, many times. It's beautiful. Um, heading after those beautiful spa rooms, you can't actually get out to the deck from here because they want to keep those private. So you either have to go up or down. So you, let's go down and then back up as we head <laughs> aft to 17. And what do we find there? That is where we find some more layout spaces where you can watch the movie Under the Stars, which is beautiful. It is very secluded and quiet. I also love that you can watch the Lido deck parties from this space. They introduced a couple of like cabana areas that you can lounge under. I love but that. But they're not reservable, which is great. So it's just first come, yeah, first, first come, first serve. And so we actually watched the 80s Rock and Glow from Ooh. that space. It was beautiful. Cool. As you continue to move aft, you've got the second floor of the Red Frog Tiki Bar. That's did I right. get that right? You did. Okay. Yes. Um, first introduced on Mardi Gras, it's a two-story version of the Red Frog... Uh, rum Bar. Rum Bar. Yeah. Only it's a tiki bar, yeah. and it's two stories, uh, and it's a, a great little space. It is. As you stay on the port side of the ship on Deck 17, you're going to find a very large and expansive Guy's Burger joint. Yeah. This is a fantastic space. Lots of seating, lots of queuing for those that are wishing to wait for a burger at sea. Even Great. still, even with how much bigger this space is, there's still lines. Uh, <laughs> Guy's Burger is super popular. Next to Guy's Burger, you've got Club O2. I had an opportunity to tour this and got to meet Rebecca, uh, oh. who recognized us from the channel, which was amazing. She was sharing how uh, it was a scramble to get ready for the ship. They were assembling the furniture literally days before <laughs> we boarded for the inaugural sailing. Wow. And then on the starboard side of that same deck, we have the warehouse, which is the arcade space for everyone on this ship to look go at, have some at, fun. Look at some of these arcade games in here. Isn't Such a cool awesome? space. It's huge. And then attached to that space is Circle C, which is another one of those kids clubs where you can drop the kids off and let them play while you enjoy your cruise. Yep. Super colorful, as you can see here. Yep. Um, just a, a fun little space for the kiddos to play. Right. Now, as we move towards the aft of Deck 17, you're going to find one of the smoking areas yep. that is on the Excel class of ships. Yep. And, and again, uh, you've got some beautiful aft views back there. Yeah. Let's make our way down to deck 16. And should we stay at the back of the ship? But mine as well. There's okay. plenty to look at. There's so much back there. There's an infinity edge pool, which is absolutely lovely and beautiful, along with a bunch of loungers back yes. there. There's also a swirls ice cream bar Ooh. there. So you can grab your swirls ice cream and you can go out and enjoy. Don't swim in the pool with the swirls, oh, no, so please, y'all. Uh, and then also in that same area, you have the Tides Bar, which is where you're going to find some of your favorite cocktails for poolside service. That's the typical aft bar on a carnival ship. Yeah. Um, and then across from there on port side, you've got what was introduced on the Excel class of ships, Shaq's Big Chicken. Don't miss out. I will tell you on the inaugural sailing, it was busy from mm. open to close. I, there was always a line. Now, the line moves really quickly because most of it is pre-assembled. Yeah. But trust me, the breakfast is served. Breakfast is served starting at 7 or 8, depending on your, your itinerary. And it goes until 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Amazing. 3 Check now, the Carnival Hub app to get the most current times for your sailing. Yeah. And here's another cruise tip that I'm going to share. You can sub out the fried chicken with grilled chicken. So if you really wanted to try the Uncle Jerome, but you're trying to be a little bit healthy on this ship, uh, you can sub <laughs> it out for some grilled chicken. Come on, you're on a cruise. Calories don't count, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. There's, there's a bunch of seating back there as well, but let's say you want to move inside and get some more calories. That's where we see the Lido Marketplace, the buffet of this ship. Oh, there are so many different great options. Not only do you have the buffet inside, but you also have the Sea Dogs where you can get some of your favorite hot dog dishes. Not to be confused with another spot we're going to talk about in a little you, bit. You've got a shawarma place. You've got a variety. Of, and it's got those pod stations. So oh. the buffet is super efficient on this class of ship, which is awesome. Now, I will say transparently, we didn't eat at the buffet a whole lot because there is so much other food on this class of ship. We have read some reviews where people said the buffet, the food was just okay on, on the Excel class. We ate at the buffet the entire week. Here's going to be a cruise tip from Mark and Rocky. <laughs> Try the buffet, sure, but make sure you check out all the other included yeah. food. Don't just eat the buffet. Let's get out of the buffet. I agree. Let's move forward. We're going to move forward into the Lido pool. So this is our forward pool on deck 16. Um, right here, you're going to see the lower level of the Red Frog Tiki yep. Bar. Yep. And that is on the port side. 
And then on the starboard side, you've got some the restrooms and as well as a ton of loungers, oh, yeah. pool. We have heard uh, again in reviews that the pool, people felt it was small. We are not big pool users. We'd rather swim in the ocean, yeah. um, but, but there is a ton ton of lounge space and a ton, a ton of deck chairs there for sunning yourself. Right. And then as you move forward on starboard, you've got one of my favorite oh. additions on the Excel class and that is Street Eats. It is included in your cruise fare unlike some cruise lines <laughs> and it's just it's kind of food truck style yeah. so you can get uh fry, french fries you can get different fries tater tots get, yeah you can get different steamed items like <sighs> bao buns oh yum oh, i know those are good and some of those thai dishes the the, yeah. the skewers those yes. skewers uh, there's just so much yummy food over at street eats right and then right next to street eats you find the seafood shack so you get right. some of your seafood additions if you like lobster or if you like any other seafood while you're sailing. That is an upcharge, so just be aware of that. I was going to say that one isn't. Lobster yeah. tail is not included no, on Lido. No, no. <laughs> And then we jump on over to uh, Portside, which yep. has my all-time favorite carnival oh. ball. <laughs> my all-time favorite fast casual there carnival restaurant. Go. Blue Iguana. Oh, Blue Iguana Cantina is so good. You can get your breakfast burritos there. They've got arepas. They have tacos and burritos in the afternoon. Super good food. Yep. Again, always check the Carnival Hub app to make sure that you are there for the time that they're open. And Rocky, don't forget that delicious salsa bar. Ooh. They've got a salsa bar so you can top your burritos or tacos or whatever you want with cheeses and yes. lettuce and salsas. The habanero salsa. <laughs> if you like a hot salsa, again, cruise tip. This is just full of cruise tips. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cruise tip, if you like hot salsa, habanero salsa is for you. I uh, was in tears one day. Oh, you yeah, put a lot hot. on. It was hot. It was hot. <laughs> and then as we move forward from that space, you are going to find some staterooms in the forward of Deck 16, as well as the bridge. Yep. Uh, we, we really like the Deck 16 staterooms. We've stayed in the, that in those staterooms on this class of ship before. Yep. Super easy access to Lido. Super easy access to Serenity. Just yeah. a great location. And it's quiet. And because you've got rooms above yep. and rooms below. Absolutely. Which we always love. Yes. Okay, jump on down to 15. Deck 15 is all staterooms forward to back. Yep, and really no changes from her sisters. Nah. Same with 14? Yeah, same with 14. There is no 13. That's uh correct. Superstition. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we jumped down to 12. Yep. Oh, I guess we jumped down to 12, 11, 11 10, 10, and 9. All state rooms. All state rooms all across all of those decks. Very similar to the Excel class sisters. And so deck 8 is really where we start to see some changes yes. on Carnival Jubilee. That's correct. So at forward of deck 8, we have the Havana state rooms. Beautiful dark woods. It's very Cuban inspired, and there's also a bar and lounge attached to it. They also have a private pool. It's cantilevered, so it hangs off the side of the uh, ship. Not a very large pool, but it's still nice for the amount of ca passengers that are in that area. Now, you do need a wristband to access this area, so if you're looking for an exclusive space uh, to get away on the XL class ship, this actually might be for you. Here's, uh, again, just a little tip. Think about where the location of the bar is when you book your room. If you were an early bird, uh, you might want to book further forward yes. in the Havana area to, to kind of make sure that you've got a quiet state Forward room. or port side, you'll be yep. good. Absolutely. And then, then we've got my favorite sit-down restaurant yes. on Carnival Cruise Lines, and that is Chabang. It is the Mexican and Chinese fusion restaurant. Now, it's just really two different menus, a Mexican restaurant and a Chinese restaurant in one, but we absolutely love it. Now, we have heard mixed reviews about this restaurant, but what I will tell you is it is about the appetizers. Those lettuce wraps are amazing. Oh, that egg drop soup. Even oh. Paul, Paul got an egg drop soup one day on accident. They brought an extra one out, and he's like, He's, he then reordered it each time we went to Chebang because it was that good. Oh, the queso fundido. Oh, yes, that is so uh, good. The tacos are okay, yeah. is what I would say. Yep. The, uh, the pollo bowls. Uh, yeah. The lunch, the, the, yeah. they're open for lunch. Don't, oh, gosh, another cruise tip. <laughs> Chebang is open for lunch on sea days. Don't miss out. That's right. Okay. Walking away from Chebang, we come to the Dream Studio where you can get your professional photographs taken on the sailing. Yep. And then you come to the upper deck of the Grand View Bar. And Grand Central. And Grand entire... Central. Oh, such a beautiful space. Yep. That bar, they did a great job. It is different from the other two sister ships. Um, and then as we round the corner, again, you've got that beautiful view of those LED screens or the beautiful windows that look out onto the ocean. And you've got your Bonsai sisters. Bonsai Sushi and Bonsai Teppanyaki. Yep, both, both some great great venues where you can get, grab some food. Please be aware that these are upcharge venues. Yep, absolutely. And so as we come out from there, you've got Pixels, you've got the entire Pixels gallery where you can purchase those photographs that Rocky mentioned, um, as well as any photos that are taken in port or on the ship. Uh, you can get all of those pictures at Pixels. 
From Pixel's gallery, we enter the first new zone found on Carnival Jubilee, and that is the Shores. Gosh, it is literally one of my favorite spaces on board this ship. You immediately see this beautiful um, kind of almost boardwalk signage. You've got the marina bar, oh. which is, it is probably, it's one of my favorite design spaces on the ship. Yeah. And then portside. On portside, you have Cucina del Capitano, your Italian restaurant. So. And that is included, by it the is. way. It's included for dinner and it's included for lunch on sea days. And they are two different menus, just like Chebang. It's two different menus. So don't miss out checking it out for lunch lunch and for dinner. Whew, we're eating a lot of food on this cruise. We better be. <laughs> and then as we move a little bit further aft on this deck, we'll see some of our favorite little eateries that we have on the Jubilee, starting with Coastal Slice. Absolutely love the two new pizzas introduced, the barbecue and the Tex-Mex. And sure, they've got some of the classics there as well. Uh, but I tell you, you're going to love these new varieties. And look at this racing track light of lights. It really is designed to feel like a carnival in that space. I love uh, it. Like a carnival. Isn't that uh -huh. fun? And then as you move a little bit further after, you have Beach Buns, which is their deli. Uh, but they've amped up their deli by introducing some hot dogs and, and sausages. and Don't oh. forget the toppings. Oh, You've yes. got to go to the toppings bar. We recorded a video here and here and here. I ate so many hot dogs on this sailing. It was uh, it was a dream. <laughs> that was that was awesome. And then as we move a little bit further aft from there, we have Rudy Seagrill. Oh, that's right. Yes, uh, it is another upcharge restaurant. It's the seafood restaurant. And then across the way from there on Starboard, you've got your Carnival Shore Excursions or Carnival Adventures where you can book all of those fun shore excursions. But don't forget about that three-story staircase with the wonderful school of fish. Oh my gosh, we're going to make oh. our way down that staircase and up that staircase. Don't you worry. <laughs> Let's continue to move aft as we see guest services on the Starboard side of the ship. Now remember our cruise tip you can avoid the guest services chaos by going into the elevator bank and walking through it and coming out into Summer Landing. Summer Landing, you've got the Carnival uh, merchandise store where it has all of your inaugural gear. Don't miss out on that. You've also got Flavor Town, uh, guys. Pig and Anchor Smokehouse, Smokehouse Brew House. Brew House. Uh, that's a mouthful. Uh, where is. you've got the full bar as well as another restaurant for dinner. Don't miss yes. out on the dinner option. Absolutely. And then on the starboard side, we have the Heroes Tribute Lounge. Yep. So a nice little space where they honor all of the different veterans that are setting sail on Carnival. Additionally, there's giant TV screens there. So if you're into sports, uh, sporting events, that's where they play all of the, the various games up there Absolutely. on Deck 8. Yeah. Now, as we move outside, we enter Summer Landing's outdoor space, which is referred to as the patio. I love this space. This is my probably, outside of Serenity, my favorite spot on board because it seems like no one knows about it. Now, that's one of the things that Carnival Jubilee does really well. This The entire Excel class, these zones really do a nice job of spreading people out. The inaugural was packed. Yeah, it was sold yeah, out. Yeah. But there were only a couple of times where it actually felt busy because of these different zones. So check out the patio on Summer Landing. It's got another infinity pool. It does. It's got loungers. It's got day beds. That's actually where I recorded a couple of our lives that we did <laughs> on the ship. And yep. so highly recommend that space. Yeah. And the, the views of the wake, the back of the ship, the water, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It is. Also on this space, when you're walking on the patio towards the port side, you're going to find Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brewhouse for their barbecue so if yep. on a sea day you want to enjoy some barbecue food, you can head right over there. Yep. You also have some outdoor al fresco dining for Rudy Seagrill as well as uh, Cucina del Capitano. And then if you head over to starboard side, don't forget about the watering hole. The watering um, hole. So they've got this watermelon uh, margarita, some Ooh, sort of drink. Sign um, me so, up. So uh, there's a lot there on deck eight. Uh, we this is a space that we spent a ton of time on the ship. Let's jump down to deck seven forward. All right, here we have the upper deck of the Jubilee Theater. Yes, indeed. It is a large theater, but I will tell you, I don't think it's large enough for the number of people on this ship. Uh, I did get to see Carnival Playlist Productions' newest show, mm -hmm. Dear Future Husband. Um, again, here's a little clip of that. Uh, let's leave the theater. This is one of the pinch points that I will tell you. When oh, yeah. the theater lets out and the entire crowd is leaving at the same time, that's a pinch point. Um, that's one of the few pinch points because you come up to the Casino. Jubilee Casino. And so the Jubilee Casino is the largest casino within the Carnival fleet. However, again, reviews say that it is a little bit small, especially if you're on one of those specialty oh. casino sailings. Right. I don't know that I've ever seen a slot machine available on any of those specialty <laughs> casino sailings, regardless no. of the ship that you're on. Right. 
The Excel Class Casinos introduced one of our favorite features of a Carnival Casino, and that's the smoking and non-smoking side of the casino. So you can actually, on portside, walk through an entire pathway that is non-smoking, uh. and it does an actually really good job separating the smoke from the non-smoke side. And then for those uh, casino players that are smokers, on the starboard side, you've got the smoking side of the casino. Right. We always walk through on the port side, and again, it's, uh, wonderful. it's just it's a much nicer touch. There are some games, there are some table games. Yep. So, some folks said that they were upset there's a there's only one craps table on board so so not a ton of table games but there are a lot of slot machines right and as you head out from the casino into grand central you will find the grand view bar this is the lower deck where the actual bar service happens, and it is so beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful space. Uh, continuing your way aft on the ship, that's seating for Grand Central, so those shows in the center stage area. Um, again, cruise tip, get there a little bit early if you want the best seats, because you're going to want to be right up front to see the action that's going on below and, and above. And above, absolutely. And then as we continue to move aft, we'll find some gift shops and stores where you can buy some of your wares while you're sailing. Once you're done shopping, uh, you've likely worked up a little bit of an appetite for a drink. And so <laughs> we enter the second of the new zones on Carnival Jubilee, and that is the Currents. Um, and there we find... And there on the port side, we will see Limelight Lounge, one of the spaces that's used for the club at night or the disco. Uh, they also do a lot of trivia and informational sessions in that space. Yep, absolutely. And you've got Alchemy Bar, the Carnival Cruise Line favorite bar um, with your fun Alchemy Bartenders. It's actually one of the, my favorite design spaces on this ship. Um, it is just absolutely beautiful here. I think we said it in the full review, uh, if you haven't watched it, take a selfie there and take us at this cruise life because we would love to see this space again and again show up in our feeds. Absolutely. Now, as you continue to move aft, you find some really cool interactive elements. That's right. So they made this huge LED screen that lines the entire current segment of the ship. And there are little interactive screens that you can go and you can change the scenery. It's cool. It's, it's cool. a really neat experience. And periodically throughout your sailing, they're also going to allow you to create a fish and put the fish up onto the screen. Uh, really neat space. Make sure you check out the Carnival Hub app for the details of when that's in the version. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I know it might sound coloring fish sounds like it's for kids, but trust me, it's for kids and at kids at heart. It was such yes. a fun space. As you make your way aft, you come to the, uh, Carnival Steakhouse Fahrenheit 555, where you can get a delicious steak. Again, keep in mind it's an upcharge restaurant. Yep. Then you've got the art gallery. So if you like participating in any of the art auctions on board hosted by Park West. Uh, you can check out their hours there and, and attend an auction. Yep. And then at the very aft of Deck 7, we have the upper deck of the Pacific Restaurant. Yes, yeah, so that is one of the main dining rooms, one of the two main dining rooms on board. Carnival Jubilee, they have really outfitted this. Look at these flashing lights. Um, they've so cool. really changed the lighting scheme in that dining room, and it is a really neat space. Beautiful. Well, let's make our way down to the first floor of the Pacific Dining Room. Oh, that sounds great. So this is the lower deck. It is a very spacious dining room. It's beautiful. Yep. As you make your way out of the dining room, you're going to find Carnival Kitchens. So this is one of those spaces where you can actually try your hand at cooking different dishes. They do different demonstrations in there. And they've introduced some new flair from Emerald Lagasse, who is Carnival's culinary officer. Now, we heard phenomenal reviews for those that sailed on Carnival Jubilee and, and took advantage of Carnival Kitchen. So uh, again, upcharge, uh, but there's a lot of opportunity there to cook your own food and, and bake your own pies How and fun. make your own meals. As we move forward from the Carnival Kitchen, you're gonna find the lower deck of the beautiful School of Fish three-story staircase. Such a cool space. Get your selfie there, please. Yes. As we move forward from there, we find Emerald's Bistro 717. This is an upcharge restaurant, so just be aware of that, but the food there is delicious, oh my gosh. Creole style. The beignets, y'all, real tasty. <laughs> um, so we are in the, the current zone, as Rocky mentioned, and the, this is where we find one of the first new bars in the current zone, and that is Inks PhD, or Dr. Inks. Uh, we, we enjoyed many a drinks here at, at uh, Inks PhD. It's just a beautiful space. The octopus arms and legs. I mean, I, I think you're going to get some selfies here too. And this is where the, the strings trio plays. Oh. There's a seating area there all around the bar, which I love. Um, just a ton of space and it's a, and it's a great hang. And, and also what we ended up doing most nights is we'd start there and we'd make our way up to Alchemy. Oh, there you go. Just one deck above. <laughs> Not too far. Well, as you move your way from the starboard side of the ship to the port side, you walk through this beautiful oh, hall. Yes. 
and it is gorgeous. There's additional seating found here, mm -hmm. but the lighting and the design is just absolutely a step up from what we're familiar with on it Carnival. Reminds me of a celebrity ship. Absolutely. Yep. So when we get to the port side, we come to the entrance of the Atlantic Dining Room or Atlantic Restaurant, which is the single story restaurant found on the ship. Yep. And then we find the lounge space and bar space for the Golden Mermaid. This is a mysterious mermaid who has found a bunch of drink recipes under the ocean and they're inspired by jewels. And I, I will tell you uh, of the drinks between Dr. Inks or Inks PhD and Golden Mermaid, I actually think I like the drinks at Golden Mermaid Ooh. better. Um, also right outside of Golden Mermaid, you've got that beautiful uh, model replica of the Carnival Jubilee oh, yeah. and those blue murals on the wall, those tiled murals. I, just an absolutely beautiful space on board Carnival Jubilee. Oh yes, definitely. Now as we jump back over to the starboard side on deck six, we find some more Carnival's fun shops. This is where all of the Hipfish branded shops are. So if you wanna buy um, expensive sunglasses on the ocean, <laughs> More there power you to you. <laughs> Again, we've got our shopping in. So and now we enter Grand Central. It's the, the bottom floor of the uh, beautiful center stage area. Here's a cruise tip. This is where we watch all of the shows. Personally, yes. we like to get a seat near the stage so you can see what's happening above and you can see what's happening on stage. Now you do have to get there a little bit early, which there is some uh, negative feedback about that on uh, some of the blogs out there, but we don't mind. We grab, we go across the way at Java Blue, our favorite coffee shop, yes. and we grab some crossword puzzles or something like that, and we just sit and we enjoy ourselves in And that we space. grab food. <laughs> Java Blue has food all yes. day long. Yes, on the Excel class of ships, Java Blue has sandwiches and wraps and breakfast sandwich or breakfast uh, croissants. Yes. And they just have so much and it's included. Yes. Now, and you don't have to stand in that coffee line. We see people do this all the time. They stand in the coffee line. There's actually a separate space where you can go and you can ask for the food. Now, if you want one of those beautiful donuts or cakes, those are upcharge items. But the actual food items, those are included in your cruise fare. Yes. Um, don't forget. Oh, don't forget. There's yeah, also right some now sweet tooth. We, if you have a sweet tooth there. We do. Yeah, we've got cherry on top right next door to Java Blue. So you can pick up those sweets on the day. Yep. And then there's plenty of seating there. I will tell you, it's kind of a loud space to sit. I, I don't love sitting in this area because you've got all of the, the coffee shop talk. You've got the main walkway on deck six. I don't love that space, but there is seating there. And there's also seating in the center stage area. Oh, and there's the bar. Yeah. Center stage bar. It's an upgrade as well. It yes, is beautiful. beautiful design. As we move forward from there on the port side of the ship, we're going to find Piano Bar 88, there he is playing his magic piano. Oh my gosh, we had such a blast in this space. If you've not checked out a piano bar on a Carnival Cruise, I highly recommend it. Across the way over on Starboard, you've got the Punchliner punch Comedy Club. It's a small space for this class of ship. Um, here's a quick line that we saw. So we, had, we saw a magic show in there, and this was a packed house. Mm. Um, it's, it's just not a very big space, honestly, for this size of ship. No. Cruise tip for this one, pay attention to the Carnival Hub app for when they're going to have a comedian hosted in the big theater because you're going to find much better seating in there. That is our preference, actually. When they put the comedians in the big theater, uh, that's when we go to see comedy shows on this class. We actually don't see them in the punchline. Now, we did go to see Minaj perform because we love Minaj on board, and so check him out. Moving forward from there on the port side of the ship, we have the gym, which is known as Cloud9 Fitness. Now, there are uh, bike rooms and there's a, a stretching room and there's tons of machines and weights. I will tell you, uh, I checked the space out multiple times on the cruise, not to work out, but to take <laughs> pictures. Right. Um, and I always was able to get pictures without people in them. So uh, hopefully you will have plenty of space in the Cloud9 Fitness Center. Oh, very good. And then across from that on the starboard side, we have the entrance to the Cloud9 Spa. Yep, and now that's where the reception desk is. Cruise tip, uh, if you don't have a spa room and you don't have a spa package, that's okay. You can still access the space because you walk past reception down some stairs and that's where you're going to find the locker room. So you're going to find a men's and women's locker room. You're also going to find a relaxation area. Yes. Another cruise tip where you can get um, sparkling water, still oh, yeah. water. You can fill up your water bottles that you should be taking on your cruise. Link in description. Um, it's just a great space down there. So yep. let's jump into the locker room. We're now on deck five and we have the locker rooms, men's and women's locker rooms. In those locker rooms, you've got showers, you've got changing areas, you've got lockers to, to store your stuff. It's a great space. Bathrooms. Um, and when you leave those locker rooms, you have an included 
co-ed sauna on board the Excel class of ships. Now, this is a secret space that no one seems to know about. And so if you are watching this video, you have a secret space that you can check out. Um, as you move forward from there, you actually have the pay area of the Cloud9 Spa, and you're going to have a sauna. You're going to have a steam room. You're going to have an aromatherapy room. You're going to have showers. You're going to have stone chairs. You're going to have a pool. You're going to have uh, more seating areas. You're going to have uh, that salt room. There's a ton of uh, areas that you can check out in the Cloud9 Spa. So if you have a spa room or you buy a spa package, uh, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. It is smaller on this class of ship. Keep that in mind. So if you're used to Cloud9 Spa on other Carnival ships, you don't have the windows. You don't have an ocean view because it's in the inside interior of the ship. Um, and remember, you've got a lot more people that have access to it, so it can get busy. Um, uh, cruise tip, check it out prior to close. That's when we found it to be the best time to actually get access to any of the facilities. We also find the treatment rooms and the salon in the Cloud9 Spa here on Deck 5. The nice thing about these spaces is they do have ocean views, but I don't know about you, when I'm getting a massage, my eyes are usually closed, so I can't enjoy it. Yeah. And then as we move a little bit further aft on the starboard side, we find the spa cabins. This is where the remaining of those cabins are located, mm -hmm. very close to the spa with great access. And then the rest of the staterooms and cabins that are in this space on this deck are actually gonna be your cove balconies and your interior cabins. And don't forget, we did a cove balcony tour on Jubilee, so you can check that out. It's a, a great stateroom. Jumping down to deck four, you've got, uh, again, more staterooms, very similar to the rest of the class of ship, until you get to not quite the aft of the yeah, ship. Mid-aft, you'll find Family Harbor. So this is a great spot for any families that are traveling on board this ship. It has a little pantry area where you can get some quick bites throughout the day, especially in the morning, they have their own breakfast buffet which is fantastic. It's a full lounge and, and you only have access to it if you're staying in that area. You have a key card that you have to scan to get inside there and there's also an ice cream station in there, there as is. well. Yes. yes. And then as you move a little bit further aft of there, you're going to find Camp Ocean, another one of the kids clubs on board the ship. And immediately adjoined to Camp Ocean is? The Seuss, the Seuss Bookville. Um, and so it's all connected. It's a great space for kiddos to hang out. TVs, gaming consoles. There's just a lot of stuff in that space to keep um, the family entertained. Games, board games, checkers. We, yes. We've seen it all back yeah. there. And then all of those are um, the Family Harbor state rooms in that That's right. ship. That is the full tour of Carnival Jubilee. It's what you came here for. I know that we did this initially with the deck plans before anyone had set foot on the ship because we wanted to get you excited. Um, we wanted to come back to you after having spent a, a glorious week on board this ship and really walk you through all of the photos and footage that we have of Carnival Jubilee. She's a beautiful ship. There's a lot of things that are different than the Excel class sisters, Mardi Gras and Carnival Celebration, but there's still a lot so of familiarity much. and a so lot of much. things that you're already going to know and love about this ship. Yes, if you've been on either of those sisters, it's going to feel like a very familiar ship for you. The layout is all the same. There are some new bars. There are some new restaurants that we absolutely loved, um, but, but a very, very similar ship. Yeah. Overall, I would give Carnival Jubilee five ships out of five ships. Um, she's a beautiful, she's a beautiful version of the Excel class, and, and I can't wait for you to meet her. Yeah, absolutely. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that you give this video a like. Uh, uh, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And smash that notification bell. Please also make sure that you check out the playlist dedicated to all oh, things yes. Carnival Jubilee yes. as Mark was able to record quite a few videos for you to be able to check out that ship. It was really amazing, I will say, to be one of the very first people on board Carnival Jubilee and to be able to share that experience with you. Thanks awesome. for tuning in. Thanks for your support. And until next time, we'll see you out at the sea. Bye.